Hey everybody, welcome back to my Eurovision React Review channel. So it's officially Christmas for me. I have broken up from work and pleasantly been surprised. Opened up my laptop and realized that earlier than scheduled, Spain has released their songs that are vying for Benidorm Fest, which will be the competition that will select Spain's song for Eurovision 2022. So there are 14 acts, I believe. So I'm now going to listen to all of them and see what I think. Okay, so the first on our list, it seems we have the Casa Marino with Postureo. Now, this is the act that represented Spain in 1990 with Bandido, which uh, I love. Um, so I'm actually really looking forward to seeing what this song entails. So they're singing it together in unison, I like that. Are they still big in Spain? Maybe someone can let me know. The voices haven't changed. They sound a bit more mature. Ah, oh, this is what Spain does best. This flamenco Latino sound. Ah, oh, we've got that kind of Eastern instrument there. Sounds quite current in the sense of, I wouldn't want to put an age on these two ladies, but I'm assuming they're older than they were in 1990. I like this. I was a bit worried. I thought it would sound quite dated. Maybe me being ageist. Is this gonna be Spain's Bonnie Tyler moment? We've tried sending older generation folk Bonnie Tyler, Engelbert Humperdinck, with limited success. I really like this. I'd listen to this. There is a certain sound when someone gets to a certain age that you can hear in their voice. And you can hear it. But if they look like that, that I'm looking at, then done well. Genetics is on their side. I just, this is what I love about Spain at Eurovision. I want more of this sound. I liked Blast last year, but I miss that kind of Latino, flamenco, Hispanic vibe and sound. And this is giving it to me with abundance, with that Eastern instrument. Almost Turkish instrument. I really liked that. That was good. That's a great start. I mean, I had high expectations. I was thinking if they're going to come back to give uh, Benidorm Fest a go, they're not going to come back with a, a, rubbish, a rubbish entry. They've got a lot to live up to, right? 1990, great song. Um, that's a great start. Okay, next we've got Blanca Paloma. Blanca Paloma with Secreto de Agua. Don't know anything about her. Okay, next we've got B Blanca Paloma. Hoping I'm saying that right, with Secreto de Agua. Don't know anything about this lady, um, but looking forward to seeing how this goes. Ooh. She's got a great voice. This is the sort of sound that I would expect to come out from Spain actually. She's thinking about water, agua, is that water? I'm gonna go with yes. It's dramatic. I think I read somewhere, isn't this like a theme, a theme tune for a documentary or something? Because it has that kind of cinematic feel to it. My only question mark is um, Greece 2018, Yana Yahtzee, with that kind of dramatic, uh, cinematic feel, vibe to the song. Now I know there were issues with that staging, but that song went in with some hype and it just didn't particularly perform. I don't know if this sort of sound translates quite well on the Eurovision stage. I quite like it. It's a real respectable, incredible sound. And I'm, I am interested 
it's just, yeah, it's giving me Greece 2018 vibes, which I'm not sure if that's a good thing. But this sort of sound sounds really authentic and really credible, do you know what I mean? Oh, that bass sounds good. It's nice, it's pleasant. I just don't think this sound is going to translate very well on stage. She's obviously very talented. And this is a well-produced song. Spain are upping their game this year. They had that nice little premiere to launch Ben the Dawn Fest, didn't they, with Ruth Lorenzo. I think Spain are taking it seriously this year. I like the fact with the second song, we've got two now in Spanish. The Spanish language song is beautiful. I don't think Spain needs to sing in English. Don't think it gives them an advantage. It's a long three minutes for me. It doesn't really go anywhere by the end of it. It's just, I guess, dramatic, right? Um, it's nice. It's a real credible, authentic sound. She seems talented. I can see why this is a theme tune to a documentary slash film. I think it is that. Maybe someone can correct me. It's certainly got that vibe. But whether that then means it should have a ticket to then go to the Eurovision stage, I doubt it. I think that song would struggle, in my opinion. Okay, next we've got Chanel. I'm going to say Chanel. I don't know if that's right. With Slow Mo. It's very good. Ah. Oh. This is a great start. This is the third song. That seems quality. Spanish. Sounds current. Sounds fresh. Booty hypnotic. Not sure about that lyric. Not because I'm a nun. Just doesn't sound right. <laughs> Hypnotized by your booty, maybe. <laughs> I like this. So this is more kind of like R&B, right? So we have flamenco. Dramatic, cinematic, pop R&B. This might be my favourite so far. I like this beat. Make you want more. Hypnotized by your booty, that makes more sense. <laughs> I like this. This is very much the sound that I grew up with in the noughties. It's pop R&B sound. Can't have a pop R&B song in Spanish without someone saying loco. Ticks the boxes for me. Just the one thing that I'm thinking in regards to, um, I really hope if this does go, I've, we've got more songs to listen to. Whoever was behind or tried to assist or butt into Beret's say, yeah, staging, they need to stay away from this song because I feel that this song has the potential to be staged awfully. Um, it's a really good song. I sometimes do get a bit nervous with Spain when it comes to staging. For me, it's always really important that the three minutes go by quite quickly and they really did. It's not like at the end of it, I was sad, it was upset. It doesn't have that kind of wow factor to it, but it's certainly a sound to my ear that I really, really like. As I said, it's certainly this kind of pop R&B sound that I used to grow up to and love. I would happily now download that and listen to that now. It's, it's not wow, it's not uh, spellbounding, it's not going to kind of rock the party. <laughs> What the party in Turin. It's it will do well. I'm quite interested to see how the others um, are gonna go down. But I mean, it's a good song. It's just I, I I think Spain need to come back with a bang this year, and that sort of sound. I mean, don't get me wrong. A young singer singing a pop R&B song on the Eurovision stage is a recipe for a top ten finish. I don't know, let's see if there's any kind of other more risk takers in the rest of the songs, but that on listen is my current favourite. Okay, so now we have Gonzalo Hermida with Quinlod. I'm butchering the Spanish language, it's embarrassing. We're slowing things down. It's 
slowing things right down. It's got a lovely voice. I mean, already from the off, I don't think it's probably wise for Spain to sa send a song that's almost within the same genre and category of Blasses last year. Um, obviously, there are a multitude of reasons why they didn't do as well last year, but I would say probably stay clear of this sound. But let's give Gonzalo a go. It's really pleasant on the ear. He's got a lovely voice. I mean, it's very um, a reference point for me coming from the United Kingdom. It's very much Westlife power, power ballad, just ballad sung by a man. I will say I, already on instant listen, I already prefer this to Blast's song last year. I liked Blast's song last year, but it took a while for me to like it. This is more instantaneous. It has the kind of recipe for kind of an instant like on your first listen. But this chorus is quite good. I mean, there's a really nice melody here. Like I said, it is such a shame that this, if it does win, is following Blast from last year with a very similar sound that just didn't go that well for Spain. I like the strings in the background. Sucker for strings. It's very much like a nice boy band ballad feel to it, right? It's harmless. In the past, I've really enjoyed watching Spain's national finals because I feel the quality of the songs have always been really strong. When it comes down to it, there's just not that one song that is just spellbounding. They just are solid, credible songs. And Spain get to choose from like a selection of really credible songs. That's the, obviously the odd duff year, but already I'm getting that vibe. So far, not one song I'm like, wow, this is gonna contend. He sounds like he's got a really nice voice, but if this was gonna rock the party in Turin, he'd have to have one of those voices that can just belt. It's a nice male voice. Unless he's going to do it now. Oh no, the song's over. <laughs> oh no, I, I really generally thought that at the end of that song we were just going to have like a key change or he was really going to show off his vocal range and really go for the power of the note and he didn't really do it. Um, it's pleasant, it's nice, it's credible. I mean, so far the, the standard of these songs are extremely high. I just feel at the moment there's no... Eurovision winner or contender in the four that I've listened to, um, but we've still got 10 more to go. Okay, so now we have got Javiera Mena with Culpa. So this is one of the songs that was released, not released, but has been available online since October. I made a point of not listening to this song uh, because I wanted to listen to them all together. So let's check it out. I don't love it. Nice uh, headpiece. Oh, oh! I don't like that disco. Pew pew. That's alienated me slightly. There's some weird music production choices. I feel like they've added a few unnecessary elements to the production. There is a lot going on in this song. <laughs> And in the music video. This isn't normally a sound that I would generally listen to, but I don't know what the sound is. Did that move on her face? I like that bit. Like when she goes, oh. Out of key. There's some real Eurovision elements to this. Like Schlager elements. But it's so confusing. I don't like that disco pew pew. I'm already singing along to it though. But like I said, there is something quite schlager about this song. What's going on now? So now we've got this like Halloween Lady Gaga dance beat. I mean, it's interesting. Oh, I'm a bit worried if this goes to Eurovision. This could fall flat. But I really can't stop looking and start and stop listening. Lecos del Bien. 
I am so confused. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> do I like it? Do I not like it? Do I love it? Do I hate it? I don't hate it. I don't love it. I think I like it. There's a lot, there's things in there that I quite like. Someone needs to sit down with that song and sort it out. <laughs> There's so much going on. I think I like it. I've got this funny feeling when I get to the final song. This is gonna end up being my favorite. This is the one that's kind of, I think it's gonna stay with me, but I'm not saying that that's a good thing. That was interesting. Okay. Luna Key, Voy. Ah, Molly. This is more rocky, right? Rocky? Rock-esque? I want the song to do something soon. I don't know what. Never heard the song, but obviously I'm... I'd like to see this live on the stage. So we've slowed down. Why have we slowed down? I kind of wanted to get going after that chorus. Why is she slowing us down again? There we go, come on. It's nice, it's pleasant. Should a song, the sound, song of this sound be just nice though? Let's see in the final third whether something can happen which will mean the song stays with me because I don't think it will. It's nice, like if it came on the radio, I'd listen. I wouldn't turn it down or switch radio station. It's safe. It's a very safe song, right? That is just, it, it doesn't wow you, does it? It's not in your face. Wow. It's safe, it's nice, it's pleasant. It's not the sort of sound that I would normally listen to. I think the three minutes would be a nice three minutes on stage at Eurovision. I don't think it would. I wanna keep on saying rock the boat. You can say rock the boat is a way of just like mixing it up, being a contender at Eurovision, right? I think Spain would struggle to do well with that song. But I do like the variety of the sounds of Benidorm Fest. That's a different sound yet again. So we're definitely being spoilt for a variety of different genres and sounds. I think there are better, str stronger songs that I've listened to up until this point. I think that might be forgotten slightly. Okay, so now we've got Marta Sango with, I'm not, I shouldn't even pronounce these titles because I'm just butchering the beautiful Spanish language. Sigui en mi mente. Well, that was terrible. Um, so I can't find the video, I can only find the audio. So I'm gonna listen to the audio. If we've gone back in time. This is very much like 80s beat, right? And that did not go well for Denmark this year in Adult Eurovision 2021. I mean, I love it. Even if it is that song on a female vocal, it's obviously not. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I was rooting for Denmark this year as well. This is my sound. 80s throwback. And exactly like Denmark 2021, they've just, she's not even tried to bring 80s into the 21st century. She's leaving that sound back there and just recording a song with exactly the same sound. I don't know if this is the right choice for Spain, but I want to listen to this song again. This is the first song where I've said that. But I just don't know, it did not go well for Denmark this year. Ah! Oh, and right at the end, Marta's left a little something. And yeah, you've got that almost schlager element to it as well. It's probably why I like it. That very schlager. Why did I pick that up earlier? Okay, I didn't want that to end. I didn't want that to end. That's my favourite song so far. That's amazing, I was really judgmental at the beginning. I didn't like the sound. I didn't like the fact that it sounded old. And I didn't like the fact that it was giving me a Denmark 2021 vibe, but it's much better than that song. I really like that song. Whether Spain should pick that is another story. 
but I haven't has necessarily heard anything up until this point which I think could do better, significantly better. Um, that's my favourite so far, hands down. Okay, now we've got Raiden with Caladilla Lauraria. Oh, what's wrong with me? Okay, Raiden, what have you got for us? Where's this going? I don't want to jinx anything, and I don't want to regret this, but in all honesty, for me, out of all the songs I've listened to so far, we're a minute in, I know obviously we had that pre-intro, this is giving me competitive vibes. Let's see what the chorus has, but I'm already excited for Spain in regards to this song. It is cool! Where are we going? Come on, do something. Or am I just being sucked up by the expensive video? Oh no, I'm not. This is good! So he seems like a performer in the sense of, can't keep my eyes off him. He's acting his heart out. I don't get what's happening in the video. <laughs> I love this guitar. This is cool. I love that electric guitar. I don't know. Listening to it, I'm not massively crazy when it slows down because I'm doing this, I'm like, mm. And then I know he goes for it again, but I think that that makes for really interesting staging. And moreover, it gives that three minutes um, some dynamic elements and you can play around with that with the staging as well. So whilst in regards to the audio, I'm not a massive fan of it slowing down, I think it's probably quite good if this gets picked and goes to Turin on stage. I think they can play around with that with some good staging ideas. They really like that cake. <laughs> They really like that cake. I feel like it slows down for too long. Love the clapping. So excited to see how this is staged in Benidorm. Am I being sucked in by an expensive video though? Ah, oh, their fault for loving that cake. It's obviously poisoned. I don't really understand what's going on in the video. Um, just people eating around sitting and eating around, eating cake, and then dying. Um, is it like a deep video about gluttony and the seven deadly sins? <laughs> I doubt it. Um, that is good. I do worry sometimes that I do get sucked in by expensive videos and visuals, but I do feel that there is a quality song there. That was really, really, really good. I feel at some point listening to these videos or listening to these songs, I had a slight lull, but I'm, I, st I feel I started off high and I did this and I'm now going back up. That is the first song that I genuinely feel on first listen is extremely competitive. If this goes to Turin and this gets the ticket and wins Benidorm best, I think that stands a good chance of doing really, really well. I need to see this on stage. I've seen a music video that complements the song and it's good and I like it. Am I going to enjoy this live on the stage? I hope so. I don't know anything about Raiden. I don't know anything about his live performance abilities, but that was good. Really enjoyed that. Okay, so next we've got Rigoberta Bandini. Rigoberta Bandini. Ay Mama. So let's, uh, let's see. I've had two songs that I've really, really enjoyed. Three times lucky. Okay. Rigoberta. Rigoberta. Bandini. I like the two voices there. There's two voice, her voice, and there's a voice behind. I like that sound. Yeah, I can't take the song or any song that says mama seriously after Axel from Belgium, who butchered the word mama for me. <laughs> so I'm really struggling to listen to this because of that. Oh. 
What just happened? Have I spoken too early? What's with the poo poo? Is that back? Mind you, Kylie's recent album. Dua Lipa. Of course the disco's back. Come on Shane, don't get sucked in by the disco sound. Is it a good song? I can't take mama seriously. I love this bit. Is this one of those songs that are really good as an audio in your car driving along, but then on the stage it just falls a bit flat? Oh, I don't know. My shoulders are going. It gets really anthemic, which isn't a bad thing. Mama, mama. She can change that for me. <laughs> I get proper post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, um, from <laughs> Axel Butchering, Mama for Belgium. Um, right, stop talking about that rubbish song, let's talk about this. That, ah, uh, it took a while to get going though, right? I feel I was quite fair at the beginning. I wasn't crazy about it, but then when the beat kicked in, does the beat come in, kick in a bit too late? You've only got three minutes on stage. It has to be instantaneous to a point. You don't want to lose, you don't want that kind of first part of your song to be that slow that people think, I'm gonna go get a drink. I'm gonna go to the toilet. Um, I really like it. Do I like it? I do like it. I do like it. That was strong. That was strong? That was strong. That was good. Right, who have we got now? We've got Sarah Diop, Make You Say. Mm, we've heard that lyric before. Feel that lyric's been done to death. So we're back to a more contemporary pop Latino flair. Her voice is incredible. This is good. This is the sort of song that I listen to. My buddy. Where have I heard that before? Dun. Oh, and we've got a dance break, which hopefully in Benidorm we're going to see some decent choreography. There always has to be a bit of room in a national final for some just decent pop music, right? Standing on its own, not comparing it to the other songs in Benidorm Fest. This is a good song. I think this is better than Chanel Slow Mo, right? I need to listen to Chanel Slow Mo again. It seems years ago I listened to that. I like this kind of on the beach vibe. You say you love me, you want me. Oh, I was about to say, I can already sing along to it. Well, because it's in English, Shane, you donut. Oh, is she not going to do something amazing with her vocals at the end there? Really push us home. Oh, that ended on a bit of a damp squid. What a shame. I thought we were really gonna have like a powerhouse vocal right at the end then. Uh, I feel like I'm left wanting a little bit more. Oh, I'm not sure now. I think I need to go back and listen to Chanel slow-mo. I don't feel that, I, I wanna listen to it again, but I feel I have to listen to it again right now, which Spain needs to be picking one of those. Um, that's good, that's pleasant. I'm really impressed with the quality of these songs, you know. Um, I don't know what I was expecting. I kind of thought, based on the kind of promo of Benidorm Fest, that Spain were like, we're, we're really going for it this year. And based on what I've listened so far, it, certainly there is evidence to suggest that is the case. Right, so next we've got Tanxuguera, Tanxuguera, Terra. Dramatic. Have songs like this done in recent memory done success has done well? This kind of dramatic Celtic Game of Thrones vibe. 
Um, there's something here. I'm really intrigued. I'm really interested. I want to continue to listen. But I'm really surprised that this sound is coming out of Spain after we've sit, heard and listened to so many kind of traditional or stereotypical sounds coming from Spain in other songs. This is a bit of a, a left field coming from the sides to surprise you, to go boo. This is interesting. I mean, I really, if this gets picked, I can see so many stage producers wanting to get their hands on this song, to produce this song. So many things you could do with this sound, isn't there, on stage. It's really dramatic, though. Like I said, even me, who's not very creative, can think of so many things I'd do with the stage to complement this song. But it's just not a sound that you'd expect out of Spain. I'm not saying that it's not, I just I've not listened, I heard it before. I feel like I've heard a lot of songs that sound a bit like this over the years. I really like the sound, don't get me wrong. I'm not sure. I like that kind of Game of Thrones dramatic kind of Gaelic Celtic vibe with the dramatic beat in the background and the women singing in unison. I think that that wouldn't do very well in Eurovision is my general feeling. I think that this sound had its time and its place. I don't think this is the sort of sound that needs to come back on the Eurovision stage. I enjoyed those three minutes. I didn't, I didn't necessarily want to skip it or zone out. I wanted to see where that song was gonna take me. So for that reason alone, it's not bad. Okay, so now we've got a Spanish boy band, Unique Majores. Majores? Okay, are we gonna have a boy band singing a ballad? I hope not. Or are we gonna have a boy band that's gonna sing an upbeat number? Bring back Dinesh, 2007, right? Maybe we might have that, preferably not with Swedish songwriters though. I think the song needs to start getting going soon. Come on, get to it, boys. Oh. I don't think this is a good choice. It's anthemic. I'm not a massive fan of chanting in a chorus to replace lyrics. I don't think this is doing anything new, sound-wise. And Spain should know with Dinesh. Boy bands don't tend to do that well at Eurovision. We sent Blue. They did okay, but Jed would beat us. And we've got to live with that. I don't love the chorus. I don't think... I mean, obviously on stage, because it's more chanty, anthemic on... What's that? What instrument's that, huh? I'm sure on stage it will be elevated and they'll bring the energy and it might be better live. But as a studio cut, I have no desire to listen to this again. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, that's the sort of sound if I hear that in like a British pre-selection, I'm like, oh. That's all right, it could be worse. <laughs> or like, whew, that could be worse. <laughs> but I think based on the songs that Spain have got in this national selection, I don't think that's gonna contend. The penultimate song, Eels, Vary Bravo with Raffaella. So we've got disco again. Is Eurovision 2022 going to be disco? I feel that there were other disco numbers in this selection that I preferred. It's nice. I preferred Marta Sango's. If we're pitting disco versus disco. Whilst I love Marta Sango, I am slightly concerned if that got picked 
it wouldn't do very well. Where this is more kind of credible disco, right? Bringing disco in the 21st century. This is more kind of radio friendly, current radio friendly. I prefer Martyr Song, but I think this probably would be a better choice for Spain. It's over. I mean, it was pleasant. It was pleasant. That, that's never a good word though, is it? When you're trying to pick a winner. I think that could do well quite, I think that could do well for Spain. It's radio friendly. It's contemporary. And that's a good thing. That's a good sign. It's on trend, which is probably quite good if you're trying to pick a song to send to Turin to be competitive. But I feel that that trend is gone. And we're so far away now from May. Is that going to be a trend in May? That sound bringing disco into the 21st century. I don't know. I thought we'd kind of moved on. Okay, so we finish off with Zane. Zane with Eco. Sounds Swedish. Polished. Thomas Jason's writing you a song. I'm assuming you're big news. There's your Swedish influence right there. Sometimes it, it, it's fair then, if you've got Swedish songwriters, how would this do in Melody Festival then? So far? I don't think anyone would be saying it was a safe qualifier. It's that bit, that schlager element that I quite like. It's quite good. It's quite good. It's giving me very much um, Rayleigh from um, Norsk Grand Prix this year. Um, hero. Don't need a hero, no. Um, vibes, which isn't a bad thing. I loved that song. It's a very good song, but I wouldn't expect anything different from Thomas Jason. It is very good, isn't it? It gets there eventually. This is gonna be a hard song to sing live. Is he going to be able? To, it's this bit that reminds me of Rayleigh's hero. Wow. Okay. I I did a whole 360 on that song in the end. I was kind of writing it off, and then suddenly it suddenly went somewhere. That was a good song. That was a good song. Okay. So final thoughts. There's some top quality songs in there. That was a marathon. <laughs> I didn't expect to listen to them all in one go. I was hoping to get breaks, but I think that just testifies to like the high standard of the songs generally. I'm just trying to write down the songs that I want to go away and listen to again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've got eight songs out of 14. That's pretty decent. But I, I want to listen to Chanel's song again. I feel there's something there that kind of fits in with what I quite like to listen to. I, I like Accusar Marino. I think that's just probably nostalgia. And I, I want to listen to that one again because I don't know whether I just got sucked into nostalgia. I need to go back to a uh, Yaviera because I feel that there is actually something there that actually I probably do love. My, I think my, my best reaction to, to any song was Marta Sango's. 80s throwback song. I really like that. I don't think that's a wise choice for Spain to pick, but I love it. That's the one that I want to listen to now. The only one that I feel that could be a good choice to really be competitive, and whilst, no, that's not fair, I would listen to it, and I do want to listen to it again, so I want to be sure, Raiden. I feel that's probably the most obvious choice from what I've just listened to. I really liked Rig Rigoberta, Rigoberta. It worried me that it took a while to get going, but I wanna listen to that one again. I think I would like that. I think Sara Deep uh, is again, a bit like Chanel, my sort of sound that I listen to on a daily basis. So I wanna listen to that one again to work out whether there is something there or if it is just kind of throwaway pop. And then the last one really surprised me. I did a whole 360 with um, Zane. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, those songs are the ones that I want to listen to again. An 8 out of 14 is pretty good. So Spain should be pretty proud of themselves. That's a good national final. There's going to be a song there for everybody. 
So those are my thoughts. What do you think on first impressions? If you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to my channel. Please do click the notification button. So until next time, stay safe.